but it was really in Spain, um, just the experience of my own misery and like sin that I got to a point you could say where I realized I needed to come back. Uh -huh. you know, I need to start. Um, so I started, I had a rosary that I would always keep on my bedside. And so it was really like, I guess one day after um, a night of partying and things, and I just, I, I just like started praying the rosary. I just felt this call to kind of grow closer to God and beg for his mercy. So I, I considered a time of reconciliation with God. Um, it was f 2000, February of the year 2000. Did any event trigger this or did it just happen? Um, sin, <laughs> you know. So uh, basically, and then I needed to, yeah, so I go, go to confession and um, I remember just the, telling the priest that I wanted, for some reason, like I had gone to confession a few times, a couple times. And then the second time that um, I asked the priest, I told the priest I was going to go to Fatima to visit, mm. which was, um, you know, I don't know how I, I remembered Fatima, maybe because of the statue that visited my family, but I knew that I just, there was a something over there in Portugal. Uh -huh. which is, so I took, I ended up in the priest was like, you don't need to go to Fatima. And I was like, well, I want to go. So maybe something in your CCE class stuck with you somehow yeah, and you don't remember. You know. Yeah. They planted a seed there. Yeah. I ended up going to all these holy sites, the Jubilee year and uh, going to Fatima, getting off the bus. Everybody else gets off at Lisbon and I, I'm the only one getting off at Fatima and the, the doors open. It's just black on one side. It's just like nighttime and it's just, it's like an empty field. And then they're just like a little residencia hostel. So I go and eat there. I ask, you know, where's, where's the place to go in and, and, and Spanish and they're speaking Portuguese and they, they tell me where to go. And I, I walk through these cobblestone streets to the, this, and then this huge plaza opens up and this chapel you know, of glass and the light and you see Mary's image there. And then these candles, I end up going and lighting a candle for my family, each of the members of my family going in front of Our Lady and praying. Uh, it was, and I went to bed that night in this like cool little residence hostel that was like all wood. And I remember how clean it felt. And I was like, this is like church. It feels like church. Like Wow. And I remember I was like, this is what I need. Like there was this desire for order in my life. Uh -huh. um, I was, I was heavier than I am now. I was, you know, beer belly, um, just kind of a slob, you could say. Uh -huh. Not ordered, my life was not ordered. And so- you weren't living a very healthy lifestyle. No, mm -hmm. no. And so I think, uh, it's a funny story, but I'll tell it later. But when I first thought about being a priest, the first thing I asked was, when do we get to retire? <laughs> <laughs> so that, which, which, yeah. Well, the retirement benefits are very nice for yeah, priests, you know. Right, uh, <laughs> right. <But> that, <laughs> In the next life. <laughs> but so that was, uh, and I remember at Fatima, so, I basically ended up um, the next day having uh, this going to mass and um, I tried to go to confession, but it was full or it was closed. Sorry, it was closed. And then I'm about to get on the, at, back at the hostel and these two nuns from Sevilla were like, we have to go. The bus is about to leave for Sevilla. I was like, I haven't gone to confession. And so I grab all my bags and um, I run to the confessional across the plaza uh -huh. and to this house of confessions, Casa de Confesiones. And I open the door and it's just packed with people. And I'm there huffing and puffing because I just run so far to get to the confession. Uh -huh. and, and all these people are in line. And then there's this nun in the very front and she she points to me and she tells she calls me and puts me in front of everyone. Oh, wow. And she tells the people, maybe she told them I was already there before. I don't remember her. But I, I get into the confessional right away, uh -huh. and there's this beautiful, like, English, uh, beautiful British English, you know, confessor. They're like, um, speak, you know, to me, son. Like, and then I, I go to confession, and, and the priest um, says, you know, have courage and don't condemn yourself. These two things that I needed to hear. And um, wow, that's what I realized I was missing was courage, because I was always trying to be popular, always uh, trying to you know, not really embracing my, my faith, always kind of just doing what fits in, you know? Uh huh. What's, and then, yeah. yeah. And then don't condemn us. And then I just realized, wow, how merciful God is. Like he forgives me. Like he's so good. Like when, like I'm off, like I got off basically. Like, um, it's that easy. Like, wow, God is so merciful. So, and I yeah. got this second chance. And so it just really hit how good God is. 
And I just felt his love at that moment through that priest. And so that kind of started the process of really praying. 